most people are unaware that plants really do much of anything. For the most part, people think of plants as background. If you do enough time lapse, you see that there aren't too many parts of a plant that don't move. The branches move around, the leaves wiggle around. That's something that biologist Roger Hangarder does a lot of, time lapse. His website, Plants in Motion, is full of movies showing how plants move to find light, move in response to gravity, and other less well-known plant motions. Pretty much every plant shows these kinds of movements where they're just rotating around as they grow. Why did they do this? So that's been a mystery since way back. And still is. But answers to other mysterious plant movements, like the one you're watching here, are sprouting up. My name is Sharon Gerbodi. Hi, my name is Josh Pusey. There are two authors on a study in science this week which aims to unwind the long-standing mystery of the cucumber tendril. Charles Darwin and Asa Gray started talking about tendrils, you know, 150 years ago, and but really they had not gotten at what caused them to coil. A little plant anatomy, this is the tendril. The tendril in a cucumber plant basically just provides an alternative way for the plant to pull itself up to sunlight. Here's what happens. The plant grows in circles. We saw that strange phenomenon earlier. And when the tendril hits a support, it senses it, another mystery, and starts to coil. But notice, there's something a little strange about the tendril's coil. Basically, the helix changes directions. What they look a lot like is those annoying little spots in a telephone cord. Charles Darwin noticed the odd coil, too. He's the one who gave it that odd name of a <laughs> helical perversion. And that helical perversion actually has to exist because the tendril is fixed on both sides. So every turn that you add in one direction has to be canceled by a turn back in the other direction. The other loopy thing about tendrils is that if you pull on them, they don't unwind, they do this. Huh? It was counterintuitive to us too, believe me. You know, I haven't had very many aha or like surprise moments in science, but I couldn't hardly believe that it was actually overwinding adding more turns, not unwinding. To figure out how the tendril does this, the researchers modeled tendrils, dissected them, and even made perhaps the first ever prosthetic tendril in the lab. And what they figured out is that the tendril changes its internal structure to make that coil. Inside the tendril is a flat fiber ribbon, and when the tendril grabs a support, that ribbon shrinks, but only on one side. The cells on that side contract, and that causes the tendril to curl. In real life, it looks like this. The other thing that happens is that the tendril stiffens up. This fiber ribbon becomes lignified. So lignin locks the cells in a certain configuration. When the researchers replicated these two properties, the stiffness and the uneven sides, in their prosthetic tendril, it behaved just like a real one, including the perversion and the overwinding when they pulled on it. And while this mock tendril was created to understand cucumbers better, it may have engineering applications. We stumbled upon this new kind of strange spring that overwinds. And I think we really have barely started to scratch the surface in what we can learn in terms of mechanics and in terms of engineering principles from plants. Plants are just coming up with these engineering solutions on their own time. Roger Hangarter cites J.R.R. Tolkien. He pretty much describes that the difference between plants and animals is that we share the same physical universe, but we have a different temporal universe. A quick PS, if you'd like to see more plants in motion and you live in Vermont, an exhibition of Dr. Hangarter's movies is opening at the Montreal Museum of Science in September. For Science Friday, I'm Flora Lichtman.